My name is Johnny Sexton. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Bright. And uh, my job here is to train students to be workforce ready to go into the pharmaceutical sciences industry that's very prominent here in Research Triangle Park. But the other part of my job, and it's a very exciting part, is doing research to discover new drugs for type 2 diabetes and obesity. One project that we're very excited about is, um, is, is finding new therapies for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And fatty liver disease is part of type 2 diabetes and obesity. It's one of the complications that very often leads towards um, needing to have a liver transplant. Our intake of fat and the fat that our body synthesizes naturally gets stored in our fat tissue. The problem happens in type 2 diabetes and obesity when your fat tissue is essentially full. It says, I can't take any more fat. And where does the fat start going? When it can't go into our fat tissue, it starts going other places. And one of those places is the liver. So the liver can store a natural amount of fat, but when you have very high circulating triglycerides, fat in your blood, that fat gets stored in the liver. And when that happens, that starts to impair liver function, causes insulin resistance, and also doesn't make you feel very good. And so if untreated, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease progresses towards permanent liver damage and ultimately uh, goes towards um, uh, needing a liver transplant. Once we had this result, this remarkable result in, uh, this, in, in diabetic animals for this series of compounds, we had proof of principle. That means that we understood how these molecules were working and we understood and we had just demonstrated that they have therapeutic potential for human beings. And that's when the NIH really recognized this research as having a lot of potential. And so they chose to invest and they invested large. And so this phase two uh, SBIR grant uh, was a total of $2 million to complete this phase two clinical trial. So what they really want is they want to see this molecule go to clinic. So that's what we're doing now in the process of this phase two SBIR. It's about a two year process uh, with this amount of seed funding that we hope to, to collect all of the data and do all of the work that we need to do in order to put these molecules into human beings. There's no currently FDA approved drugs for fatty liver disease. So what we're trying to do is selectively target fatty liver disease so that we can stop the progression towards liver damage and liver transplantations, which is going to help the longevity of a significant portion of type 2 diabetics. The other thing is that it will help to combat insulin resistance, which means that we can be reversing type 2 diabetes. And also, by reversing insulin resistance and fatty liver disease, those lifestyle intervention things are a little bit easier to address. Well, I'm Karen Levert and I'm the CEO of a company called Southeast Tech Inventures and we're a technology accelerator. What that means is we look for the most promising technologies and we further develop them and we're in Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. In our business model, as we work with researchers, the next step, after we know we have a proof of concept and we have to make sure the technology is going to work, and that's a big, that's easier said than done, um, once you get past that point, there will be a time where it needs to come out of the university uh, research lab. And um, Dr. Sexton has started a company called Curl Bio, and ultimately the assets, so the intellectual property of the uh, research will reside in that company and there will be a team and it will move forward to advance it. We made a collaborative effort with North Carolina Central University, with Curl Bio, the company, and Baylor Hospital to execute this process of pushing this technology out of the laboratory and towards the clinic. So they have the hospitals and they have the facilities and resources to actually execute clinical trials. So we hope to do that in two to three years. Our goal, um, and we're starting right now, is to, uh, we'll, we'll talk with four or five potential partners, and when we say partners, these will be the companies that actually will 
ultimately license the intellectual property from the university and that's where it's really great from, a, from the university standpoint because um, the university will, owns a, you know, a part of the company that's spinning out the technology and then our goal is to really make sure it gets into the hands of that big pharmaceutical company that will take it into the marketplace to treat uh, patients for type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease. The successes that we've had are only made possible by the research infrastructure here at North Carolina Central University being bright for the investment that the state made in bright as a training mission but set up this infrastructure to do this kind of real uh, professional scale drug discovery projects. And the other piece of infrastructure that was absolutely critical in what we're doing is the state-of-the-art animal facility at BBRI. And so these two pieces together, this core research infrastructure that has been developed at NCCU in the past 15 years, is really what's enabled this kind of success. And it's, it's without this kind of research infrastructure, these kinds of successes really just aren't possible. Thank you.